some say that China should not be labeled as a developing country in the WTO at all. It should be changed into a developed country. Mm. What do you think? What's your comment on this? Yeah, this is part of the American discourse, of course, about China. We, again, we, we have worked on this. I mean, China has, has the a per capita income of a middle-income right. country, first of all, but still a developing country. It still has a very large percentage of its population in agriculture compared with advanced economies. And in the, the rural economy is still a very big economy, lower productivity economy. Uh, that's a classic sign of a country that still has development issues uh, to, to deal with. We would continue to classify China as a, 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 a very successful developing country over the last 30 years, of course, but still a developing country. We see more regional frameworks and partnerships and collaborations, closer ties within these uh, countries next to each other. Mm. Um, but there are rising concerns about decoupling or de-risking um, as related to economics and trade, especially between major players in the world. I mean, there are clearly some real concerns that if you remember from 2021, all the talk was about a building back better right. world together. Right. Right. That's not really happening. Uh, unfortunately. I mean, geopolitics, of course, is part of that problem. Um, but, but certainly rising protectionism uh, poses big, uh, big challenges. Um, so that's a concern. Fragment the, there is a sense in which the global economy is fragmenting. So there's a worry there for developing countries that, I mean, it's a genuine concern, of course, for both countries and firms that resilience in the supply chain is an important concern. But if it, it shouldn't be done in a protectionist way, which would be damaging particularly to poorer countries. There is a fraying of the multilateral system in trade, in finance, in other areas. I think, and, and that needs to be addressed. I think what we are, we take optimism from a little bit is that we're also seeing an increase of trade and financial flows, technology flows within, amongst developing countries, so-called South-South trade. So that growth of South-South trade, and South-South trade for the last decade or more has been growing more quickly than global trade, and where China plays a very critical role, of course, as a major manufacturing economy. So, so yeah, there are, there are concerns for always when, when you get tensions between the largest economies, but you can see opportunities coming out of that tensions as well. So we talked about U.S. and China um, to some extent optimistic. Where do you see the relations between the two countries heading in terms of trade and, and economics? Um, is it going to be going up? And that's particularly in, recently, I think you see that in the US. There's a recognition that they, this level of tension is not healthy for anybody. It's an election year yes. in the United States yeah. next year, and that causes all kinds of political sentiments to arise which may be disruptive, um, not only in the relationship with China, but, but uh, uh, in other areas too. So we have to watch how that unfolds over the next 12 months. But, but I think there's a recognition that you can't, you, this, this constant antagonism towards China is not a healthy position for the United States to be in at the moment. Do you see any common grounds? between the two countries at this point, despite our disagreements on various issues? Well, I mean, clearly one common ground is the climate challenge. Right. And that we have the COP in Dubai uh, at the end of this month and the beginning of next month. Mm -hmm. And we can't solve that problem without the US and China and Europe as the big players in this mm -hmm. space acting in a cooperative way. Mm -hmm. So you would hope that that would be one area, I think, where greater cooperation takes place. And with supply chains, you know, the U.S. economy still relies very heavily on Chinese uh, goods and it's not, it's not helpful to squeeze everything into a kind of idea that the U.S. is going to remanufacturing. That's not going to happen. I think, uh, I think a lot of people, policymakers in the U.S. understand that and, uh, and there will be need to be a little bit of a easing of the tensions around the issue of uh, supply side, uh, supply chain resilience as well. I think everyone understands that a cooperative solution is the only way forward. And, and you would hope that from that you could get a wider sense that we need to move away from a more antagonistic type of relationship to a more cooperative type of relationship.
Are you overall optimistic about Sino-U.S. relations? I do worry a lot about the political rhetoric that is generated during, during an election and that having negative consequences for the economic side of that story. And so that, that's, that really is a, a, a concern that we have. Um, you know, we need to reform the multilateral system. We need better, we need a healthier trading system. We need a healthier international financial system. And U.S. and China cooperation is critical in both those areas. Um, so so we, we definitely need to dial down some of the rhetoric fairly quickly to move forward. Next year is probably going to be even more difficult for many of the world's countries. Uh, with the release of our data for Q3, especially the GDP growth rate, a lot of uh, foreign banking institutions, they've, they've actually raised forecast on China's uh, GDP growth for this year. But do you think it's still challenging to meet the 5% growth rate that we set for ourselves? I mean, the headwinds are pretty strong. Uh, you know, the, the weaker the global economy, the more challenging the export market uh, becomes for right. for China. You have the you still there's a problem with uh, the real estate market. You know that China has a lot of policy space, mm -hmm. has a lot of policy instruments, it has a lot of fiscal space and and and, and ability to respond uh, with with spending. I mean there are challenges for the Chinese economy like everywhere else, but it's growing at whatever five percent, six percent a year. You know, the U.S. is growing at two percent. Europe is not growing at all. It was n contracted in the last quarter when China was expanding significantly, and overall for the year, China will be growing ten to twelve times faster than the European economy. So that we have more concerns, I have to say, about about Europe than we do about China. How important is China's steady growth amid a global economic stagnation? Well, it's critical. I mean, you know, it's the second largest economy in the world. So, and, and has, over in the period since the global financial crisis, contributed more significantly than the advanced economies uh, to global growth. So it's steady and a return to the, the, the kind of 5% growth target plus is very important, I mean it's important for China of course, but it is very important for the world economy.